today in Canada. The Primula are stunning by the pond. I'm so happy I got them early in the spring. Keep them well watered like the pansies. And the koi are looking well after a long winter's nap. They've been eating a little bit here and there. I feed them sparingly in the spring as the water is still barely at 52 degrees. Let me see, maybe it's changed. Yeah, about 52 degrees. So it's not too bad. It's not that cold anymore. But it's still not that warm. The pond during the heat of summer, uh, the whole pond system never goes really above 70 degrees. Uh, the water is always very cool here. And that helps aid in the health of the koi. As koi are like... Um, cold water fish like trout and they do better they have less disease they're fresher in the colder water that's why I never seem to have any koi disease because the water is always ice cold which is ideal to knocking off diseases over the winter slumber period I know you feel sorry for them in the winter I do heat the pond with one heater but it's barely enough to bring the water uh, above freezing, barely. The water is still very cold, even with the cold frames. It just keeps uh, the ice down from the surface of the water, but the overall water in the winter is still barely like plus three, plus two. So it's still ice cold and they still do very well. And they seem to be doing, uh, growing nicely. These are the half-grown uh, koi. Uh, they're starting to come up and beg for food. Soon they'll be like their, um, the, the big koi. They'll come up for the fingers. They're still kind of skittish. There's a couple that are big and know to come and bite the fingers and they'll get food. But like I said, the water's still cold so they're not overly hungry. And they're eating uh, a diet of algae right now in greens, which is beneficial for their digestive system in the winter period or in the cold uh, spring. Like it is getting warmer, but the, the water temperature is still cold because below the ground, the water, uh, the ground is probably still frozen in some areas uh, down deep. The ground froze uh, exceptionally hard in Medicine Hat this year. There was a lot of uh, cases of bust uh, water lines, even though they're down six feet. So you can uh, see that the frost can go quite deep so it may appear warm and nice but below the ground that the pond is sitting on the water's still ice cold the yellow uh, sorry marsh marigold just performs beautifully and i think the trick to getting a big beautiful marsh marigold i've had this in the same basket oh since the early 90s and i've never transplanted it uh, except for the one time because it'll grow to the size of the pot and then kind of spill over and that's it. But the trick is to keep the water just barely above uh, the top of the pot. Like an inch above the pot at all times. They don't like the water level to change. So if you have a pond where the water levels are changing drastically, like up, down, up, down, like in the bottom pond, I had moved it there. Uh, the water level here changes all the time because it pumps the upper ponds full all the time. So the upper ponds are always at the same level. 
so the bottom pond loses the water and it didn't do well in the bottom pond until I moved it back up here and the lighting is nice here too it seems to like the lighting so yeah it grows nice beside the uh, moss the beautiful moss so that's my trick I don't fertilize it or nothing it just has stayed in the same pot like that yellow flag there the yellow flag has been in the pond it hasn't had a pot since the very early 90s i think 1991 and it bust out of the pot 92 and i peeled the pot away and set it back in as a lump and it literally floats the fish can swim underneath it the rhizomes are buoyant and if you have a large enough bunch like here they will float okay because it's in it's not potted, it's in like two and a half uh, feet, two feet of water at least. I'll have to measure it floating too. I'll, I'll have to take two and a half feet of water, I believe. And it floats quite nicely there and it eats up all the waste. And uh, it's nice to have it at the lower level. All the waste comes washed down and can be picked up through the flag before it goes to the bottom pond. There's three baby koi in the ba in the bottom pond that I bought last year because I like the colors. They're tri-colored, red, white, and orange. And almost a bluish color, and I thought they're kind of pretty, so we'll see. Now, now this is their second year in the pond. Some of them have some beautiful markings. I know I shouldn't have any more koi. I don't have a lot of goldfish. The goldfish population is not exploding. The uh, I don't get a lot of baby fish because the dragonfly nymphs eat them all. Dragonfly nymphs are so perfect uh, as a predator. They live in the pond for up to two years. They grow an exoskeleton. I'll have to talk about the dragonfly larvae. They're natural uh, predators. Uh, and they do keep the population of the fish down because if these fish were populating all the time like crazy They quickly outgrow their ponds and I'd be left with a dilemma. So and I'm not in uh, For buying and selling. I just like to have my little Family of fish and keep them forever, but not have too many Right because I've already had to expand the ponds over the years. They were much smaller in 1991 and I only built this new upper five foot pond four years ago. So if you look back on my stream, uh, the YouTube stream from four years ago, you can see when I was building it, it's five feet down. It's a nice deep pool. There's no pumps in here. The water's pumped up from the lower ponds and it free flows down. I've got a series of pumps. I like to control the flow. Like some uh, water flow will have more water uh, flowing through them, like the upper ponds here. These upper ponds, you can see there's like waves, like white water waves, like you'd see coming down the mountains. That helps to keep disturbed the surface of the water. You can see how the water is rippling, right? Because if you have like a stagnant area in the sun, then algae will uh, build up. But if you keep the water, the surface water moving, it prevents that warm pocket of water from creating an algae bloom, right? Now, why is all these sticks falling in the pond again? Ugh. Yeah, I could leave the covers on and then nothing would fall in the pond, but the plants actually grow better without a net and everything because that plant gets really tall and then the pond needs to get bugs and it needs you know it just needs to be natural and i do scoop this uh the excess waste once in the spring a little bit here and there off the bottom of the ponds and that seems to keep it really clean and tidy and i just add water to the pond system once in a while there's a pressure filter behind uh where that blue heron is a big pressure filter and i'll backflow the water into the garden uh, for a short period and uh, and then you turn the handle on the uh, pond max pressure filter and all the waste comes out it's actually the easiest thing in the world to clean 
Uh, and I have gotten away. I've run it two years now. If you run the water fast enough through the pressure filter all winter, then it won't freeze. Right? If it's too slow, then the water will freeze. And these uh, big barrel filters, I ran them all winter. Never cleaned them until two days ago. And you can see they're picking up lots of waste again. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but the waste will get condensed. There's four bio, uh, easy bio filters. If you just t type in EZ, EZ bio filter, and you'll see them, they come up, and you can connect many together. I've got two on each side with a T to the uh, bigger pump. I mean, they won't take a really, really big pump, but, you know, three to maybe 4,000 gallons of uh, water an hour. If, you know, if you have too much pressure, then you're going to have to add an extra filter and a T, you know, and then it will actually run all winter quite nice. So, yeah, there's uh, two on this side, two on that side. So there's four easy bio filters connected to the one pump. I think that pumps about 3,000 gallons an hour or something. It pumps this spinning ball here. I can't remember for sure. Where is it? There. And the spinning balls provide so much oxygenation and circulation. They break up the water uh, surface so that you're not going to get large amounts of string algae. And if you run your pond all winter with the easy biofilters, they seem to keep the, fi the filter better. Like the, uh, you don't have to re kickstart everything. Uh, everything just seems to kickstart itself. All I do in the spring is clean out the filters and get the water uh, to, uh, going as fast as possible to simulate an early uh, spring runoff, right? Because in the wild there'll be an early spring runoff. It'll churn up the water and the debris, get that bacteria going and it just seems to work better. And plus because these two are flow throughs, the water is uh, pushing it down to the yellow flag. So a lot of the waste will, uh, the koi will stir up the bottom and it'll go down, down, down to the bottom pond, down to the yellow flag. And the yellow flag right over there will eat it. The yellow flag's growing an inch or so a day now. Um, it's even larger than it was yesterday and of course much larger than last week. You can see it's taller than the marsh marigold that's blooming yellow. And it's a big eater. Best for photosynthesis filtration. I do have a, a rush coming up here, a bull rush. And I uh, used to have aquatic mint growing in there but these guys pulled all the aquatic mint out and ate it. So. But I never have pea green water. I don't use UV sterilizers. I've never had one. I've never needed one since, well, day one, I, when I first set up the ponds back in 1991, I had pea green water the first year, and I had to fight it. I used all kinds of products and cleaned the filters lots, and then it went away. And I kept the ponds running year after year, and because there's a series of ponds, so if I ever take one pond apart, it's not totally decimating the whole thing, because I've got three more ponds that uh, still have the bacteria and the nutrifying uh, good uh, bacteria to clean everything. So when I rebuilt this pond, I never had to worry about the pea green water because it's always flowing with the aged water, right? That's a beauty about having multiple ponds. Like the one big pond I wouldn't have because uh, the surface, you know, unless you have a good uh, drainage and a good flow through, I like to have it flow through, like the creek effect, right? So it's sort of like walking by the creek and there's little bubbly streams of water and everything is getting pushed down into the yellow flag where it will just turn it into a big giant marsh and the roots, the tentacles of the roots will shoot out and eat everything, eat all the waste. I did see a baby fish in here the other day, still black. I don't get a lot of babies. Sometimes in the spring you'll see the baby fish that managed to escape by the clutches of the dragonfly nymph. So, and there is a minnows, minnows in there as well. But yeah, that's about uh, it for pond maintenance. I just take the net. There's nothing to scoop out in this pond because it flows through quite fast. There's actually two pumps. The two balls that are spinning come down to here. 
but only uh, half as much flow comes to here. And I see there's a bunch of sticks caught in the trap there. I'll have to get it. Oh, I don't know where they're coming from. They're coming from one of the trees. I don't remember which one. But yeah, all those sticks are falling in the pond. But you can't worry about things falling in the pond like crazy because things happen, right? You're going to get debris in the pond. And yeah, like if it's heavy debris, I'll put the nets up. Because I, I, I don't, like in the fall, you're going to get heavy leaf litter. So the nets will come up. In the spring, yeah, there are some trees that will shed more than others and you might need a leaf net. Uh, this year I don't have many plums on this tree. The trees are finally starting to leaf out. Those, there's the choke cherry and an apple tree. And there's another flowering uh, crab, that, uh, crab apple that blooms all pink. It's so beautiful when it gets blooming. It's just like marvelous. So yeah, spring's my favorite time of the year. Everything's fresh, you know. Everything's not too overgrown you know it's exciting spring so yeah come and join me again all my YouTube fans and friends and uh, we can learn from each other like I don't know much about koi disease because I haven't had to fight koi disease at all so I couldn't help you there but uh, in terms of cold water and keeping koi healthy in cold water. Well, I've got lots of experience. 30 years of experience. So those people, you know, like in the UK who think their fish can't possibly survive in ice cold water. Like if I lived in the UK, I would relish the opportunity for the fish to go through a cold period. Because your cold is really not cold at all, okay? You only think it's cold. These guys were out in the minus 40. Minus 40 below, where your eyelashes freeze solid, you know, and I've had these since 1991. I used to not cover the ponds, and they used to get a couple, uh, two, three inches of ice, but there would always be ice holes where the water's flowing. Um, I don't know if it makes much of a difference to cover it, but I found covering it because of the new top pond is more water volume now. One heater was having a hard time keeping the ice away without uh, the cold frames and it was only like down to minus 20 so the following year I erected cold frames because uh, you know it does get to minus 40 here quite frequently in the winter and so I wanted to be prepared right because taking care of big koi is a responsibility and you have to realize they all grow very large and koi will outlive their owners typically, okay? They can live for over a hundred years. The oldest koi was a couple hundred years old, I believe, one in Japan, if you go look it up. But uh, yeah, if they have ideal conditions where they're not getting sick and diseased, you know, where the water's nice and cool, like Japan does get winter and I don't think they heat the ponds and the long cool periods uh, are beneficial for sure. And you don't want your water temperature above 70 degrees in the summer for very long. If you have to put ice in your pond, like chunks, a big frozen chunk of ice in your pond if you're down south and, and you can't keep the water temperature down, right? Because then you'll just uh, promote diseases. So keep your fish, your koi healthy and keep them ice cold. And that's today in Canada.